This is the latest Max for Live plugin from Point Blank. It's called the Graphic Sound Generator and allows you to create a sound by simply drawing in the frequency content directly onto the screen. This sound design tool is based on the principles of Joseph Fourier and maps frequency against time with amplitude represented by the intensity of the line. We look at the fundamentals of sound in all our sound design and mixing courses and in our Ableton Sound Design course for example, this provides a solid foundation when designing sound using the range of instruments within Ableton Suite. If you're not sure how to install a Max for Live plugin, then this is covered in more detail in our Kick Drum Designer video. So for now, what I'm going to do is double click on the zip file I've downloaded and then drop it onto a MIDI track as it's a Max instrument device and then click on the open button. So this is the interface. At the top we've got a number of parameters which affect the shape and intensity of what we draw and also can affect how it sounds as well. So to actually hear sound we draw it across using your mouse and then you'll need to press play if it's in sync mode. I've also got here a loop running. If you draw something you don't like then just click on the clear button and let's increase the pencil size. And what's going to be useful here is if we also add a spectrum just so we can see type of sounds being created. So along the x-axis is time, along the y-axis is frequency. So if I draw a shape like this, it's going to increase in frequency. If we go horizontally across, then it's going to create a sustained tone. We've got the intensity control here, and this will affect the loudness. So grey colour, as you can hear, is quieter than a darker colour. We we'll also increase the pen size further. So it's automatically synced, so the length of this pattern is set to a bar. And we can obviously change the sync. And again. It's most useful on a bar or a half note. Let's switch that back to a bar. As well as a pencil, which we can create of any size. We can also choose different shapes, like a rectangle. So again, let's clear this. This is going to create little blocks of sound. And you can see how it's reflected in the spectrum view here. And we can change the size and shape of the rectangle. So increasing the width creates long bars. Or we can go the other way where we've got a small width and a longer height. It's going to create these kind of clicky textures. So at the moment I'm drawing in and it's completely unsynced. Apart from the actual loop, where I draw the sound is not quantized in any way. So we can quantize all our drawing by coming to the quantize menu down here. So if I choose eighth notes, for example, now when I drag across, it's going to put a sound wherever there's an eighth note. Let's go to sixteenth notes. And so we can start to build up rhythmic textures as well. As well as rectangles, we've also got the option of oval shapes. And let's go the different way with a longer width and quite a narrow height. So this allows us to create kind of more ambient style textures.
Now, the actual frequencies which are being played back are determined by this menu here and also this control, the bass frequency. So at the moment, it's set on to harmonic series, and the fundamental of that is determined by this parameter here. So at the moment, that's set to 20 hertz. And as we draw up from right from the bottom, that goes from 20 to 40 to 60 to 80 and increases up like that. So we get kind of quite harmonic based sounds. We can also choose odd harmonics as well. So this allows us to create potentially kind of square wave like textures. Certainly the same harmonic content of a square wave, but with a square wave, the amplitude needs to decrease down. So switch that back to harmonic series. And we can also switch to even harmonics as well. Now, depending on where the main interest lies is whether you'll no be able to notice any difference between even and odd harmonics. The bass frequency determines the lowest frequency or fundamental. And you can see when I adjust that, it shifts the spectrum down. Or as I increase it, shifts it down. If you want to set the bass frequency to a specific key, then if you've got MIDI enabled on it, you can then press your MIDI keyboard. And so if I press uh, C, that says 131 hertz. If I go down the octave, 65.4. So it'll automatically work that out for you. And I'm triggering that live. It's not particularly designed to be triggered live in this way. And to be honest, the best way to use this would be to set it up and resample it. Okay, so if we set up an audio track, audio from, and let's just select uh, PB Graphic Sound Generator here. Okay, click on record. And. And then jam in and record whatever sounds you've created. And you can now see that these sounds have been recorded in. Obviously, you can then edit those further. The other parameter which relates to frequency is the frequency smoothing. And what this will do is basically slide between specific values when you change the bass frequency. Let me just turn this one off and uh, come back here, call up Spectrum. Okay, so you can hear that sliding. Or if we set it to one, it's pretty much instantaneous when we change the bass frequency. You've also got amp smoothing, and this can sometimes help reduce clicks. All depends on the image you've created and your sound settings. If you want to, you can unsync the generator from the timeline. And now we've got a frequency control here. So you could really slow things down, kind of slow evolving ambient sounds. Good, and there's also another setting as well, which we can determine the frequency content of the sound. Uh, and that setting is direct. So previously we had selected frequencies from the harmonic series, but with direct mode, it routes the values directly to frequency. And this will go from whatever the bass frequency is right up to around 500. And we can also offset this. Okay, so you can see we're getting up to around 500 there. If I increase this bass frequency, it'll then offset. So that's the direct mode, and you'll get different sounds depending. On... <laughs> Let's pull the bass frequency back down. Now I should mention that I haven't limited this in any way, okay? So if you set high fundamentals, what you'll actually find is possibly about halfway, the frequencies above 20K will be reflected back down and can, that can result in some quite dissonant sounding frequencies. Okay, so if I just clear that, let's get a pencil tool. Let's push the bass frequency up. 
So you can see it when it hits 20, it actually starts coming back down again. Okay, so when you're creating timbrely richer sounds, you can get some quite nasty distortions happening. Okay, so just be aware of that. It can create some really cool sounds, but also quite fatiguing on the ear. There's a couple of extra drawing modes, Rect Follow and Oval Follow. Let me clear this, bring down the width here. And this works a bit more like kind of Etch-a-Sketch, really. Okay, let's quantize that as well. Clear, bring the width down a bit more. So we create these kind of quite interesting patterns. Okay, let's bring that brace frequency down. And it'll also work with Rect Follow. Now there isn't specifically an arrays mode, but if you pull down the intensity to zero, it will work pretty much like an eraser. Okay, so now if I just drag across here, you can now see it's removed this band of frequencies. Let me just switch this back to rectangle, bring the width right down. And as we've got quantize on, as I drag across, it's gonna create rhythmic sounds within it as well. So lots of possibilities here for creating different sounds and creating different textures. If you create a pattern which you really like, you can save this. So click on Save Image. And if I were to clear that, we can then load that back in by coming back to the menu here and load that particular pattern in. Now, one of the limitations of this free version is it's not really designed to be used with presets. However, you can store a preset and it will store all the parameters here but it won't store the pattern, okay? But, but if you save your image and take a note of what it is, you can then load it in and it will work as you last ran it. If you have any suggestions for additional features, then please post in the comments on YouTube. And if there's enough interest, we may release an update later on in the year.